At Rowan University, the College of Science and Mathematics and School of Health Professions offer students more than 50 academic programs in basic and applied sciences, mathematics, and health professions. We promote a student-centered approach to learning in a research-rich environment. The professors I've worked with, they're always with you every step of the way. I originally wasn't going to do research on campus, and then my professor for Chem 1 had approached me and asked me if I wanted to work on one of the projects, and I thought it was a really cool and interesting opportunity. I have friends that go to different schools, and they're also in the chemistry programs, and nobody I know really does anything like the research that I'm doing. Students have small class sizes where they can, in class, get their questions answered and interact with the professor. They have really taken ownership of the research. They're telling you what they should do next. That's when you see that change. That's when you see them grow professionally. It's helpful that when we do have these labs as classes that we learn how to use the tools that are given to us, like the hydrostatic weighing lab and then also the exercise phys lab. I feel like it makes it so much easier to go out there into the real world and be able to be confident in my skills. You, you can't put a price tag on practical skills. And we want to make sure that we're putting out the best, so we make sure that our students know the skills while they're in those lab settings before they go out and even do their internships. We're equipping them with everything they need so that they can be successful in any path that they choose. Whether it's training the next generation of scientists and healthcare professionals, or providing all students with a foundation in science and mathematics, the work we do today will impact the scientific thinking in our society for generations to come. Hello, my name is Bridget Malone, and I am the Public Relations and Events Coordinator for the College of Science and Mathematics here at Rowan. And it is my pleasure to also introduce our Assistant Dean, Jennifer Ravelli, um, who we are excited to have joining us today. She's on mute, but she's saying hi, everybody. <laughs> um, Welcome. <laughs> Um, so on behalf of the university, I want to extend a very warm welcome to those of you joining us for this information session. Uh, today we have a fantastic panel of faculty and one of our graduate students who's joining us, and they'll be giving you a glimpse of what it's like to be a chemistry or a biochemistry student here at Rowan. Um, but before we begin, I just have a few housekeeping items. Our panel will be doing a brief presentation during which all of our guests will be kept on mute with their cameras off. But I strongly encourage you to enter any questions you have into the chat box throughout the session. Then following the presentation, we'll have a question and answer period with the panel. So at this time, I would like to turn things over to two of our Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry faculty, Dr. Kristen Barrett and Dr. Allison Kelly. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Allison Kelly. I teach at Rowan in the general chemistry sequence mostly, and I am the general chemistry lecture coordinator. Hi, everyone. I am Dr. Kristen Barrett. I teach in the organic chemistry sequence mostly, which is the second year or sophomore year for most majors. Um, and I am also the organic chemistry course coordinator, so that covers lectures and labs. So we're going to get started with our session today. Next slide. Yeah. And we're going to start out by talking about the academic programs that are available in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. So in our department, there are three undergraduate majors. There is a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry which is accredited by the American Chemical Society, which is a, a national institution. We have a Bachelor of Arts in Chemistry, and then we have a Bachelor of Science um, in Biochemistry, which is also accredited by the American Society for Biochemistry um, and Molecular Biology, which is also a national institution. We have a minor in Chemistry, a Master's in Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences, which is a niche degree. Not a lot of universities offer that type of graduate program. We have a certificate for graduate studies in industrial chemistry, 
And in addition to all of those programs, there's much opportunity for collaboration with the Department of Molecular and Cellular Biosciences, as well as collaboration with the two medical schools that are associated with our university. So in this slide, we'll talk a little bit about the accelerated degree programs that are available to our incoming majors. So the first is a direct entry program into the medical school. It's a seven year program of three plus four. Um, it is a biochemistry bachelor of science coupled with a doctorate degree from Cooper Medical School of, Euro, uh, of Rowan University. Or you can do a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry with a DO from our Osteopathic Medicine School. Um, keep in mind that the application for this program is December 1st of each year. This gives the um, medical school an opportunity to interview applicants. So if you are joining us and you're a high school senior, um, you may have missed this deadline, but certainly any juniors or counselors that are available, please make sure you inform um, or you're informed that the deadline for this direct entry program is December 1st. In addition to our seven year accelerated program, we also have five year degrees that with an additional year allow you to get a master's. So you can do um, a BS in biochemistry and then get a master's in our pharmaceutical sciences program. You also can do that same master's with a BS in chemistry. And then you can do a BS in biochemistry and then get a master's in cell and molecular biology. And that's again with the Rowan Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. Or you can do a chemistry BS or BA, and then you can couple that with a STEM master's of arts in education. So we definitely have multiple options for um, accelerated degree programs and these are direct entry also. Um, our department is also one of the first to offer a program in cannabinoid chemistry. As you may be familiar, New Jersey has um, legalized the recreational use for marijuana. And so as such, many people are interested in learning more about the field. And so starting in fall 2021, we will have a program available, a certificate of undergraduate or a certificate of undergraduate and graduate study in cannabinoid chemistry. So again, this is a, a new program um, and it's one that is not offered by many departments, but we do have it, have it here at, at Rowan University. So just some things to highlight that you would be involved in um, with as a major in our department. Uh, we do have advising. So you have people along the way every step to kind of help you understand what major to choose, what career to choose, what classes to take. So um, academic advising, so that's helping you determine classes, professionals, more career development. You'll have that from um, faculty as well as um, career services advisors. And then there's the Office of Health Professions for those of you who may be interested in pursuing medical school after your degree. We do still have small class sizes. So while you will get that big campus atmosphere, because we do have a number of students on campus, your individual classes will be rather small. And we have flexible academics. So you can kind of tailor your program to your interests. So you can choose electives or minors that um, more suit your needs or your desires for your career. So our degrees are flexible like that. We also have um, some of the top lab equipment and instrumentation that as you saw in our commercial, you are able to use directly um, while you're participating in research. And again, we do have research as you saw in the commercial and it is required in our department. So as you saw, not a lot of institutions offer the availability for students to do research, but in our department, not only is it available, it's required and you will be able to use um, state-of-the-art in instrumentation yourself. All right, so now I'll pass it over to uh, Dr. Allison Kelly and she's gonna discuss more highlights about our department. Thanks, Dr. Barrett. Um, I, for one, am incredibly proud of the work that we do in our classes and our coursework to prepare students, but that is not all that we have to offer in our department. Um, so we are aware of the importance of community when it comes to college and learning and our student community in our department is, I would say, thriving. 
Uh, I am actually the faculty advisor for our ACS Associated Student Club. Uh, and we have multiple events every semester, uh, even remotely, right, in this weird current time where if we have to be remote, we can do that. Uh, so our, we do something for Mole Day often, Pi Day, career seminars, research seminars. We are involved in community service uh, to the wider Rowan community as well as into Glassboro. Uh, and we also do a lot of socializing and hand out a lot of swag. Um, so definitely check that out. We have uh, opportunities in the department for tutoring, both uh, to be tutored in your classes, but also eventually to pay that back and uh, tutor others in return. And peer mentoring, our learning assistant program uh, places students actually into the classroom so that you can help uh, for classes that you have already you know, passed, you can go in and help other students on their journey as well. Um, and then we have a lot of strong ties with local industry. Several of our faculty are directly involved with the South Jersey ACS. Uh, and we always send uh, students to those uh, ACS events as well as other local industry events. In terms of research, it's important to our department. And I would say that we have a flourishing uh, research program in our department. Our key highlights, we are, have been successful in getting external funding, right? So uh, foundations like the National Science Foundation uh, provide money to fund the research on Rowan's campus, uh, including two career uh, grants from the National Science Foundation, a prestigious award that not all universities can boast of. Um, we have research in many different areas, pharmaceutical drug design and discovery, organic synthesis, and reaction methodology, so understanding how those chemical reactions work and how we can manipulate them, uh, solid state chemistry, more a little bit on the physics side of things, and then renewable energy, uh, signaling and analytical chemistry, and then ionic liquids, nanoparticles, and chemical sensors. Uh, if any of those interest you, I'm sure that, um, you know, we, that there are, all of our faculty love to talk about their research uh, and what they're doing in that. But even more than talking about the research, they want to get you involved with research. So our undergraduate research is a key sort of foundational cornerstone to our department. And in doing undergraduate research, um, you're basically developing a long-term mentorship with a career scientist, right? You work in a faculty-led research lab. Uh, and by doing that, you gain important skills both in the sciences in terms of actually getting to work on instrumentation and run experiments and even help plan and understand how research projects go from a single idea into something that is applicable and publishable. Um, but you also get to work on some of those other skills like presenting uh, or summarizing, writing up research and kind of see how it happens uh, at the ground level. Uh, as you work in our research labs. We have two types of research. We do research during the semester uh, for credit as well as paid positions. Uh, and then we also have a college-wide summer undergraduate research program, right? So maybe you focus on courses during the semester and then uh, we do summer research as well in the summer. Um, our students who do research have the opportunity to present and publish both on campus and oft, so. And then our uh, lastly at Rowan, we know that you are here for a reason and often that reason reaches far beyond uh, your four years here and we want to prepare you uh, to go forth and be successful after you leave the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Our students have found a great deal of success. STEM job opportunities are growing uh, with a degree in chemistry or biochemistry. A lot of there are a lot of different opportunities and paths available to you. Um, from industry in pharmaceuticals or food science into the medical profession, uh, continuing on in academia through graduate programs or even teaching, right, and giving back, heading back into your communities. So everything on this slide is something that a Rowan graduate has actually gone on to do after uh, earning one of our degrees. So you can see a number of different key industries as well as um, some notable 
uh, other schools and institutions with uh, great graduate programs as well. Uh, so I think that's it for the presentation part. Yeah, hi, um, I'm gonna join back in and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now and ask all our panel to go ahead and turn their cameras and their videos on. Great, I think we see everybody. And we have some questions that we uh, are coming in and we want to um, also bring in Sam Foster, who is a grad student here, um, I believe in pharmaceutical studies, is that right? Yes, and, I agree. And you also were an undergrad student in the Department of Chemistry, is that right? Yeah. So um, if a student, I know you've done a lot of research in Dr. Grenius's lab, um, and I know that one semester of research is required in the department, but um, beyond that, uh, if you wanted to do research like you are with Dr. Grenius, um, you know, how would a student get involved doing that? With, and also, how can they find out who, which faculty is doing what research? So uh, in terms of getting involved, you basically can just ask. I know, uh, so I started research my freshman year. And at that point, I had Dr. Grinius, my research advisor as a professor. And I asked if he was doing any research and the research he explained was very interesting. And so I asked if I could join the lab and he said, yes. Uh, in terms of finding out um, broader research. Uh, the faculty website actually has a link to each faculty's page, some of the research they do, and uh, links to individual websites, which give much more in-depth explanations of their research. That's great. So would you say... And if I may, and if I may add one more thing to that. Uh, so we also encourage our students to make sure that they speak to multiple different faculty before deciding on a research career just to make sure they get different ideas, different viewpoints, different types of areas that they can ex get exposed to and see what suits their needs the best and then make a decision for themselves. Yes, in most cases, in some cases, they might have already found or find out their niche like Sam did early on in his freshman career. But some of the students, they get some more, need some more time to get the hang of things. And then eventually they do find a research home. And so we, we essentially force all the students to talk to multiple different faculty as well so that they get exposed. <laughs> you well, also good. Sometimes uh, students need a little nudge, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. You also weren't locked into a lab. I know a couple of people who have uh, joined one research lab and then found another research lab they were more interested in. And so they're able to swap around very easily. Oh, that's great. So maybe even in different, maybe in different departments as well, like if you wanted to do something um, with a professor in MCB or yes. bio. Yes. Yes. yes, it's quite common. In fact, uh, uh, in addition to what uh, Sam mentioned, what can also happen is that a lot of our projects are interdisciplinary. As such, there are several collaborations going on across campuses, across the departments and such. So several of our students actually end up getting uh, working in the research labs in the medical schools as well. So that way uh, they get an early exposure to the medical field and they, uh, they're working in our projects here. They'll be getting credits here, but they'll be working in the medical schools. So that also can happen. And my bad, um, I apologize. I didn't um, introduce the uh, head of our Department of Chemistry. Would you like to do that right now? I'm good. Uh, <laughs> everyone will know me later on. So once they join, they'll know me, so it's okay. <laughs> well, that is our department <laughs> head of chemistry and biochemistry, Dr. Jungle Lagagata. Am I gonna, I'm gonna, I totally messed it up. Can you say it for me? I, I do too, I mess it up. <laughs> so my, my name is Subhash Janna Lagadda. So I'm the I current head of bad. chemistry and biochemistry. Okay, thank you. I, I have a, to put you I spot. have a, I have a question in the chat box from a student of what the difference is between the BA and the BS degree and how both either would be applied. Okay, so the BS in chemistry degree is accredited by the American Chemical Society. So it's a very strict regimen of courses that we must adhere to to meet the requirements of the ACS. 
So as such, uh, you'll be taking a bunch of chemistry courses all four semester, all four years of your program, and there is very little leeway or flexibility in uh, in taking anything beyond those degrees. So it's it prepares you very well, but in chemistry, uh, yes, uh, it is still a well a very well rounded degree. As in, you do get three semesters of math and then two semesters of physics and then several other uh, disciplines. It is still a well rounded degree. but it's very very targeted towards uh, me, uh, a specialization in chemistry so it will prepare you for like a phd program in chemistry or uh, other graduate programs like chemical engineering or uh, related fields uh, it also can prepare you to get into uh, an industry type of position so that would be what a bs in chemistry degree would be the ba in chemistry is more uh, flexible in the sense it's not accredited and the intent of the ba program was to essentially uh, make it a dual degree program as in uh, an education for example so somebody could pursue a ba in education and chemistry so that way they get uh, get uh, to become high school teachers essentially or they can get into the uh, academia or, or other type of preference as well with the dual degree options Thank you. So along that vein I also have a question. Um can I easily move from chemistry into biochemistry? Can I change my major? Is that very hard to do? Uh it's absolutely easy. So in fact the uh because of the unique nature of the two programs, the first two years are almost identical. So the first two years of BS chemistry and BS biochemistry are almost identical with the exception of some bio versus some math so there is a little more math involvement in chemistry and a little more biology obviously in biochemistry so with an exception of one or two courses you would be able to uh, you can easily switch from chemistry to biochemistry or vice versa uh, up until the sophomore year and then not even be affected and it is still possible to do so even after that but it might mean you take a few more courses to get the other degree but up until the first second year though it's just aut- almost automatic Thank you. And and um can we just go into a little bit more because I think some high school students they're not really they know chemistry but they're not really sure what biochemistry is. And I know that they can switch later but could you just go into like a little bit more detail like uh about biochemistry and the outcomes for that? Okay, uh, do either of you want to take it? Alison or Kristen? Um, I'll do it since I I teach a lot of majors who end up going into the medical field. So biochemistry um, prepares you similarly as, as Dr. Subash mentioned for uh, careers in industry. Um, but one of the biggest differences, or at least why students would choose a biochemistry degree, um, is biochemistry prepares you very well to pursue a medical degree. So if your interest is healthcare at all. um that extra biology component that's offered in the BS in biochemistry is a good preparation for continuation into medical school rather be a uh, one of Rowan's uh, medical schools or if you want to go into a different or even just a medical field so um dental or veterinary um any kinds of healthcare related field um the biochemistry degree um is slightly better suited for that than the BS in chemistry just because there's a larger um biology component that's available in that degree. And if I may add the technical aspects of biochemistry itself. So chemistry is, as everyone knows is the study of uh, materials and elements and such. And then uh, depending on what you are doing with those materials they can uh, chemistry can further be subdivided into organic chemistry, analytical chemistry, physical chemistry, inorganic chemistry and such. So one of those sub disciplines would be biochemistry. and biochemistry as the name suggests is the interface between chemistry and biology so we'll be talk in biochemistry we'll be talking about the role of chemicals within the body or within the biological systems so the impact of chemicals in the body or the type of reactions that are happening in the body or if you are designing a drug what does the drug do inside the body so it's essentially uh, chemistry in the biological system would be biochemistry okay and i just want to um remind um all of our guests here please if you have questions go ahead and put them in the chat box um cuz you have this unique opportunity to talk to people directly today um another question that we had um 
Well, I'm going to put, I'm going to put Sam on the spot for this one. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> so why, you know, obviously you probably, um, you know, did your research and searched through a, a curriculum at a lot of colleges, you know, wh why did you choose Rowan? And, you know, looking back at your undergraduate degree uh, years, what was your favorite thing about being a Rowan student? And it doesn't have to be necessarily chemistry related. Uh, no, it actually is, which is, is funny. But um, so I actually chose Rowan because of the research aspect of it. I really wanted to get hands on and start playing with a lot of like equipment. And I went to a lot of other schools, uh, larger places like Rutgers and, and such. And um, what I found is that really undergrads were, were very locked into classes. You, you basically only got to do chemistry in the lab courses. And besides that, you just read from a book. And so I wanted to do chemistry all the time. And so that's why I chose here. Uh, and if I may add to that, if I may add to that, I know I'm, I'm not a student here, but then if I can uh, interject there, uh, one of the things that we, uh, one of the aspects that we really pride ourselves in is the undergraduate research component. And as Sam also mentioned, what we specialize in or what, how we are different from like most other big schools is that, uh, yes, we do have a small master's program, a graduate program, yet uh, our master's students are not the primary research centers in our department because it's a very small program. Most of the, depart most of the groups will have like one or two graduate students at most. So still the primary predominant workforce in our department are the undergraduate students. So which implies the students themselves will be handling the chemicals, handling the instrumentation. They'll be uh, learning all these hands-on techniques themselves. So that when they are when they're graduated from Rowan, they'll be better prepared to take up anything uh, in their professional careers. So as opposed to like a bigger school, they may have that uh, disadvantage because there'll be a very robust graduate program there or uh, postdoctoral program and such. So the senior students will be doing all the work and non-graduate students for the most part will be either washing dishes or just observing the graduate students while do they're doing research. So in that sense, we are really uh, special. And then we're also much better than some of the several uh, smaller schools in terms of our infrastructure and instrumentation. So we have like easily more than two to $3 million worth of instrumentation just in our chemistry building, you know, just in our chemistry department. And if you add the other instrumentation available throughout the campus for ready use for the students, it makes it one of the best equipped departments in the world to do chemistry and at the undergraduate level. So you would say that the department is really focused on experiential learning? Definitely. Yes. So we have a question um, about the major that if you major in biochemistry, can you take additional chemistry courses and, and graduate with a dual degree in chemistry and biochemistry? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a great question. But uh, as much as we would like to, the university doesn't allow it. Uh, there are limitations on the number of courses you can double count towards multiple degrees. And unfortunately, because of the sheer uh, number of course, uh, uh, courses that are uh, in both majors, it makes it almost impossible to major in these two together. So, so, if, you about to choose, six, so if you had to choose between the two, um, you would probably, if, if, if medical school was, was your goal, you would probably recommend do, going the biochem route? Yes. Or the BA chemistry route with a biology dual degree. That is That option also can exist. Excellent. But biochemistry is already tailor-made for that. So either, either option would be fine. And you could still go into industry with yes. the biochem degree. Yes. yes. So what I'm hearing is lots of options, which is great. And when we talk about the four plus one programs, can you can you just talk a little more? When do, does a student have to decide on adding that extra year to get that master's degree? Okay, so typically uh, the first two years, we understand the students are still getting to learn the system and the university and such. So we don't uh, expect the students to be doing uh, involved in the, mas in the master's or the accelerator, accelerator program up until the sophomore year. So around the junior year, that's when they start doing the research and then they start getting to know the faculty a lot more. And then once they get the understanding and feel for the subject, 
uh, that's when the mentors and the advisors can uh, talk to the students and then they typically apply around the end of junior uh, middle of junior year and they find out uh, by the end of junior year whether they've been admitted into the accelerator program and then the way it works is that uh, the master's program is about 30 credits of coursework and then the students are allowed to take up to 12 credits of those master's credits in their undergraduate curriculum so that way they get a head start. So and then they finish the remaining 19 credits in the last uh, graduate year. And then they'll be saving a lot of money as well uh, by taking those graduate classes as an undergraduate student, because they'll still be paying the undergraduate tuition for that. By that and plus normally it, it's a two year master's program, which they can condense it into one year, one additional year and get the master's as well. So it's saving them time and, and, and they're getting a break on tuition. You yes. know, speaking of, um, yeah, saving time and tuition. What um what can you tell us about AP credits uh, for students that are taking advanced placement chemistry? And if you don't, if I'm putting you on the spot, you don't know off the top of your head. Um, we can definitely um, provide the students with uh, contact information so they can get in touch with us later. Yeah, I mean, uh, to my knowledge, AP credits of four and a five. Uh, get them exempt out of both chemistry one and chemistry two, I believe, and even an AP score of three can get them exempt out of chem one. Is that correct, Alison? Or... I I don't. That sounds low. I think it's a five for chem one, chem two, a four for chem one, and a three okay. for maybe for just the entrance exam, exempting the exam. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. I I would have to double check on those numbers, but I think it. I think the you need, I think you need a four on, to skip the entrance exam, maybe. I, mm, I have uh, to double check them. Okay, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm so pretty they, sure five gets them uh, both out of Chem 1 and Chem 2. They get into Organic 1. But I think with a four, they get at least Chem 1. That I, I think I'm positive on. But we can get you, if anyone is definitely interested in that, we can get you the specific exact information. Yeah, and I'll be showing contacts. Um, shortly here, um, all the contacts on the screen for the department and, yeah. and admissions. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to place ahead. an AP equivalent um, guide in the chat box now. Great. A link to that. Also, I imagine that some students would be able to get calculus credit as well. Yes. To free up their, their schedules coming in. Um, let me see what other, oh, okay. Um, let me see. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So as uh, Alison said, three gets them out of essentials. AP yeah, credits four is Chem one, and five is Chem one and Chem two. So essentials of chemistry is uh, a course that we created about two years ago uh, to make sh to prepare the students essentially, because what we were seeing for the uh, long longest time is that about a third of our students taking chemistry one were failing out of Chem one because they didn't uh, have the appropriate background in chemistry. So mm -hmm. what we made sure is that we uh, put a placement exam as a prerequisite for our chemistry one. And then the students have to pass that uh, placement exam with a 50% score or higher to be placed into chem one. If not, we force them to take essentials of chemistry, which is a one semester remedial course, which prepares them for success in chem one. Because we just want to make sure that they have that, that solid rock foundation yes. so that they don't fall behind later. Yeah. 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 And then so, the other thing is that so, if the students do succeed, uh, do uh, uh, master the content well, uh, they do have multiple options of getting back on track because we do offer chemistry one and two, organic chemistry one and two in the summertime as well. So they do have the option of catching back up pretty soon. Yeah, I would just say essentials is, uh, I don't think it's, it can be, I think it can be a very wise choice for a course. It's designed to save time, money, and your GPA, right? Yep. So for the students who, who would have spent a lot of time and money trying to take Chem 1 when they weren't prepared and possibly had to withdraw or gotten a grade that, you know, doesn't showcase how good they can be in chemistry, uh, Essentials is supposed to be an, an on-ramp into your success, right? So yep. uh, it's definitely, I think, can be a very, uh, a good choice for some students. And we also send out these uh, brochures to the students, uh, in, informing them that they are supposed to be taking this placement exam early on. 
So but as soon as they accept uh, their um, position at Rowan University, we start sending them reminders that they're supposed to be taking this placement exam. It starts like uh, around February of the, their high school senior year. And from that point until June, July, they can take this exam. And if they don't place well, we do offer some uh, essentials in the summer before. So they can even take the placement exam before they start their freshman year on in college. And that way they can get the uh, head start they need to do well in chemistry one. So all these options do exist. We work with the students to make sure they succeed in the class. Yes, and it's for it's really designed to make sure that, like I said, that they succeed. And I've noticed that some of the other departments have placement tests too. And it's not meant to be something that's intimidating. Um, it's really as meant to be a tool for them to get started at the right spot and grow from there. Um, so we already talked about BA versus BS. Oh, um, this actually, this is a good question for everyone. Uh, maybe, maybe Sam the most. Um, so some of the students haven't really been able to come to campus because of COVID. And we're hoping that next year that that's gonna be different. Um, and Glassboro is, is unique. It's really changed over the years. And I'm hoping that maybe you could give some insight to students that haven't been, aren't familiar with South Jersey and aren't familiar with their downtown area, uh, what kind of things there are to do, where they can eat outside the dorm, um, what it's like to hang out on campus, and, and also um, it's, it's just, I think that's also nice. So like if, if we have a, a commuter student who's wondering like, you know, if they're gonna be staying on campus all day, like what can they stay on campus all day? Is there places yeah. for them to hang out? Yeah, there, there's actually a ton to do in Glassboro, which is awesome. Uh, the downtown area, it has a ton of stuff. There's escape rooms and a VR arcade. There's tons and tons of restaurants and bubble tea and all sorts of really, really cool stuff. I have Sam freezing um, a little bit. Living okay. on campus. Hello, can you guys hear me? Am I cutting out? You're, you're good now. Okay. Whew. I was getting worried. Um, so, yeah, there, there's plenty to do uh, around. Um, one of my favorites was there's actually a rock climbing gym uh, just outside that. of Glassboro. Yeah, it's uh, it's about a five-minute drive. So it's it, there's there's so much stuff to do. And um, even, even housing off campus. I mean, I live in an off-campus apartment uh, five minutes walking distance from campus. So there's there's plenty of things, even if you aren't uh, hoping to stay on campus. And I believe if you um, are a freshman or sophomore, you in your full time, you do live, do need to live on campus. But then after that, you can live off campus. And a lot of people take advantage of like nearby apartments and renting yes. a house, and sharing things like that. Yes. And a lot of my friends are actually commuters too. And so they they uh, they park and commute in and come for the day. And there's plenty of places on campus to stay. I mean, there's the library and, and in the science hall, they have seating areas downstairs and, and places for you to sit and just pass time in between classes if you don't wanna drive home and back. Um, and I don't know if you're a foodie, but I am and I live nearby. So I think I know all of the restaurants in Pittman and in Glassboro. There's a wonderful Italian place. There's chicken and pizza if you like that. We have a new diner. Um, I think there's Thai food, there's Mexican food. Um, there is, um, I know in Pittman, there's some uh, brew houses and um, it's really grown and there's a lot of variety and I think it's I think it's really exciting. Plus the, the downtown area has the open green space that um, is just beautifully landscaped um, and a really pleasant place to hang out. Yeah. Um, do have, have when you lived on campus, did you live in dorms or did you live in any apartments? Uh, so I did the dorm. So I think my freshman year I was in, I want to say Wilson Hall, started with a W. Um, and that was a two people to a room, like traditional dorm style. Um, but after that, I did one year in the Rowan Boulevard housing, which is more suite style. So it's a couple of people in one suite sharing a kitchen and bathrooms, but individual rooms. 
And then I did one semester actually in uh, a townhouse style on campus thing, which was uh, individual rooms and it was multiple floors and it was a, a nice little self-contained dorm for, for uh, four people. Great. Um, I should mention that there's a variety of different housing options as far as price point. So um, if you're looking, there's economical uh, options and you know, different options for people for the, to, if, you know, to consider. Um, I would, I would I, just say, not, not that I have, but to, to Sam's point, right, it is not uncommon for me to walk around, you know, do, be walking from one office or to the classroom and to see groups of chemistry students on that third floor of science hall, taking over a table, arguing about NMR spectra or their lab report, or just chilling for a little bit. So I would say that there's certainly um, even a sense of community in Science Hall. Not right now, but you know, when we are all on campus, uh, I think that that's a, um, definitely a mark of the department. And I will say that our Science Hall is beautiful. I mean, as soon as you walk in, we have a lovely atrium and our planetarium is right there. So it just immediately when you walk in, you feel science all around you. And um, as you mentioned, Allison, when you go up to the floors, each one has that lounge space where there's all that light coming in. Um, and it's a really beautiful building, but the laboratories are gorgeous, state of the art. Um, I know uh, I did not have that when I was an undergrad uh, studying geology at University of Delaware. Um, but and if I may, if I may add one more thing to that, so not, not trying to boast or anything, but our science hall is about 15, 16 years old, I think right now. Uh, but the students joining this fall, they will not be in this old science building. They'll be in but a it's much not newer old. It's discovery beautiful. hall. <laughs> yes, we do but have then, a brand new building. Brand that's... new discovery hall. So there is a brand new discovery hall and the first semester uh, students, all the freshman chemistry students, all the chem chemistry freshman classes will be held in the discovery hall. So we have a brand new 2021 building coming up, even in the midst of the pandemic. So. And I just visited the labs a few days ago. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous labs. And that's going to be uh, available in fall? Yes. Oh, great, great. Um, Jennifer, do you wanna, let's talk a little bit more. Oh, well, first I wanna, I just wanna, was there anything in the chat box that we were missing? Well, I think we covered everything in the chat box so far. Okay. Um, also we have, we have our admissions uh, representative, Teresa. She just joined us. Um, let me make her a co-host so she can come on screen. Hi, Teresa. Like I said, she is um, one of our admission officers or admission representatives. Um, and we literally are just getting to the point where we wanted to talk about um, the affordability of Rowan, our scholarships, and some of the other things that some of our students may not um, know about Rowan, especially because they can't visit campus or they may not, well, they can visit campus now, but they may not have had the opportunity to do so um, before they applied. So one of the things we, we didn't cover was um, tuition. And we've been having a very lively discussion about the high quality education, uh, the research opportunities, our wonderful facilities, our new discovery hall, and uh, with all those things, um, students are still at getting um, this education at a really competitive price point. So if you could talk a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, so right now, tuition and fees um, for an in-state, because we're an in-state institution, so we have both in-state and out-of-state. Um, if we have any out-of-state students out there, let me know. I am actually um, the person in the office that works with our out-of-state students. Um, so for instance, you're looking at about 14,000 uh, for tuition and fees. Um, room and board, when a student applies to Rowan um, and they get accepted and then they get their college financing plan, we put them together this, uh, you know, a plan that shows them tuition fees, room and board, and breaks down the different costs for attending Rowan. Um, so initially when they see that room and board, we average it out for a student, a freshman student, um, so we always kind of advertise it as $12,904. Um, but I always tell students when they are, you know, getting to that point that they want to decide on Rowan, I love to have that conversation with them to discuss their other options in terms of um, 
room and board at Rowan. Um, we have so many really nice facilities, um, you know, residence halls, the townhouses, the apartments, um, and every, something for everyone's budget. Um, I, I feel like I'm someone who knows best. I was a student at Rowan and I definitely uh, was finding every way that I could, you know, make my uh, tuition affordable. Um, so we can always like discuss that. Um, and then scholarships. So we do offer merit-based scholarships at Rowan. Students are automatically considered for that once they apply. Um, and then for our out-of-state students, we offer what we call the Brown and Gold Scholarship. So that is in addition to the merit scholarship. Um, and the, the goal is to bring their tuition down to an in-state student so that it is affordable for them. Um, and then again, when the students, I know I talked a little about the college financing plan, when they receive that, if they fill out the FAFSA, um, they will see on that college financing plan, not only what they were offered in scholarship, but what they were offered in uh, federal and state grants and loans. Um, so it really does that college financing plan. I love it. It helps break it down. Um, it's very digestible for students and their families. Um, and then I always like to have that conversation with them so we can explore other options for them as well. Um, and then another uh, form of scholarship that I, I bring up for students, and even though it's not uh, helpful during the application process, is the foundation scholarships. So when students uh, become, um, you know, full-time students at Rowan, uh, we do offer a number of other um, opportunities for them to apply for scholarship. And one of those is the foundation scholarship. There's over 200 different scholarships available to students, um, and they are awarded based on merit and based on their participation 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 off and on campus um, and they can apply every year so that's a really another great way for them to you know fill in the gap to pay for their tuition so that's actually based on if they're really uh, involved in campus activities that's a factor in this scholarship uh like how they um you know different leadership uh, and organization leadership things like that yeah okay great that's really good to know um, so I think I think we're coming to the end of our time, and I want to make sure that we get our contact information um, on the screen. So I'm going to share my screen again, and just bear with me a moment while I toggle through here. Okay, so you should be seeing our contact information page here. Please let me know if you're not. Um, so. Here, I just wanna make sure that you have our department contacts. Um, you can please, please reach out to us if you have other questions, things that come into your head tomorrow. Um, and you, darn, I wish I had asked that. Uh, we like to hear from our prospective students. Um, you have uh, our department heads uh, email there directly. You can also visit rowan.edu slash chemistry for more information. If you wanna learn more about research and our faculty, um, there's our admissions website uh, page. Uh, if you, you know, if you have your phone handy and you want to grab a quick picture for future reference, so you have all these at your fingertip, uh, please go ahead and do so. Um, I just wanted to mention that we are doing in-person campus tours now. Um, we're doing them safely with social distancing in mind. You can also do a audio tour um, if that's something that you prefer. We want to make sure that you. Um, get to see some of the wonderful things about our, our beautiful campus, really, really beautiful campus. Um, also, I have listed there our financial aid office contact. Um, as uh, Sharissa said, please take advantage of them, reach out, uh, find out more information to make sure that um, you can have every uh, opportunity to make your college experience here at Rowan affordable. Um, then also I encourage you to, in, to visit our college website at csm.rowan.edu. Um, and I have the QR code there if you wanna bring it up, um, make it super easy for you to find it and then you can add it to your favorites. <laughs> so just pause here for a second if you wanna log on there. And then we hear we have Henry Rowan and I just, uh, this is the end of our program. I want to thank everybody for attending today. Um, on behalf of everyone here, we wish you a very successful college career. We hope to see you on campus soon. And I know this is a really exciting time for high school students and their parents. 
and we wish you all the success in the world. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for joining us.